Creating a forms pro survey is straightforward, it's pretty quick and simple to do. But have you noticed that there are a few different places that potentially you could add that survey to and it's important to know which one you're adding it to and why. So if we go ahead and we click on the top right here, we're logged into Forms Pro, you'll see that you've got a list of environments. If you're using Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement, then you're going to, you should see your environments for, if you've got a production environment and sandbox or any additional ones, you're going to see those ones listed. But you're, what you're also going to see is a default environment. Now, let's look, have a look at, um, if we're going to uh, the make.powerups.com, or web.powerups.com you'll be um, redirected to the same place and this is kind of where it starts from so it's something to um, at least have an understanding of as to why you've got this default environment so if you've heard of the uh, common data service or CDS um, that's basically a database that contains a set of standard entities so you'd be familiar with the entities um, accounts contacts we've got standard entities that will exist in CDS so you can kind of connect different sets of data together. You can pull things in together into different apps. So consider your um, production environment or your sandbox environment, they're running on CDS and they're basically using a, a, a model driven app if you're using the latest UI. Um, Forms Pro also runs on CDS. So what that means is you're able to go ahead and pull in your Forms Pro entities into your production or your sandbox environment because you're essentially adding them from CDS. So let's have a look and see what I mean. So if I, I'm looking at the default environment and I come over here to data and then I look at entities, if I go ahead and let's just make sure we're showing everything. So we'll see here we've got account, we've got contact, we've got some other things that you're going to recognize. But if we have a look, we don't see case in there. If we scroll down, we don't see product in there. We don't see quotes in there. We don't see invoices, that kind of thing. Those are the entities that we will see within Dynamics 365. So, like I said, the default is essentially all of the standard entities that exist. And then if we go ahead and we flip and we change to sandbox or production environment and we do the same thing, and let's make sure that we're looking at everything. And if I scroll down, we'll see there's case, there's case resolution, there's all of the things that you would expect. Um, we've got entitlements, we've got um, invoices and so on. So that's, that is essentially the difference is your Dynamics 365 is also running on CDS. It's just within its own specific environment, sandbox or production or, or whatever else that you might have. So now hopefully that, that helps explain a little bit in terms of you've got those those different environments, you don't have any control over the default, it will be there because that is essentially the common data service with those standard entities um, that are already set up. And then like I said, you've got your whatever else you have in terms of Dynamics 365, customer engagement or talent, whatever it is that you might be using. Now if we go back to Forms Pro, again, like we saw earlier, we've got those different environments. Now what you've also got is if I go to Microsoft Flow, because we've been looking at Forms Pro and running flows um, from uh, essentially triggering based on survey responses, that kind of thing, and we click and look, we've got the same thing again. We've got that default and then you've got your sandbox and your production or whatever environments you might have. So let's have a look at uh, how we can potentially deploy a survey. So essentially you've got a survey that you've um, set up, you've been testing it against your sandbox environment. How do we then go ahead and get that into our production? So it's not all that smooth, it's a little bit clunky, but we can achieve it. So let's have a look. All right, so we've got our survey. In the title, I've gone ahead and I've added in the word sandbox and we'll see why in just a moment. So if I go ahead and click, we've got an ellipsis, these three dots here. If I click on that, I can then go ahead and I can select to copy this. And then I can go ahead and say, I want to copy this to a specific environment. Then we've got our list of environments. I want to copy this to production. I'm ready to actually have this start being used now in a production environment. And I'm going to go ahead and click copy. All right, so we see a little bit of a, a message here that says it's been copied to MVW prod successfully. That's great. So let's go to our 
production one just to make sure. So there it is. Now what's going to be copied is the actual survey itself with all of the questions and any branching rules. It's not going to move over any responses, which you wouldn't expect, but it's also not going to move over any of your Microsoft flows that might be connected to the original survey. So let's go back into the sandbox one and have a look at it. So if I go into the send survey area, it will show us how many flows are configured. So I've got two, this is because this is obviously uh, a test environment. Um, so we're only actually concerned with one of these flows. So I want the create invitation when case is closed and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click to edit this. All right, so first of all, it's important to look at how the flow is set up. Um, so if I go ahead and click on edit, the first thing is when you're creating your flow, make sure that the environment that you pick is the current one. So the current one will be whatever it is that you're actually um, logged into or whatever you're viewing at that moment. So when you're creating your flow and you're starting from a specific environment. So we're in the current environment, which is sandbox. So it's important to have that set up um, and also any other steps that use common data service, make sure again that that current one is the one that you've got. All right, so that is our flow that is connected to that specific survey. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and export it and then import it into the production environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and select to export it as a package, a zip file. And let's give it a name. So we're gonna go ahead and call it um, case closure feedback survey put in a description, uh, we're going to leave everything else as it is and we're going to go ahead and export this. So it's going to go ahead and it's going to create that package so we can see it. it's downloaded at the bottom there. All right, so now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and switch and move into the production environment. So we can now see that one is selected and we're going to go ahead and we're going to import the, the flow that we just exported. So let's go ahead and let's browse out for that specific download. And we can see there it's uploading the package and to not navigate away from this specific page. So at the moment, this is this is really the only way to, to do this and do it uh, in a clean fashion um, in terms of trying to add a flow into a solution at, the, at this point in time of, of um, creation of this video. There is no way to take a flow that you have created um, previously and then add it into a solution and do this and, and deploy the specific solution. So this is the way in which to do it. If you're watching this, there, there may have been changes um, several months to be able to do it, but this is the only way at this moment in time. All right. So now we have imported that package. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, click to change action. Instead of updating, we want to create this as new. We'll leave the resource name as it is and we'll go ahead and save this. Um, and then also on the related resources, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to select um, the uh, same um, uh, connections for each of the connectors that I'm using on this specific flow. All right, perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import it and we will create this flow in the production environment. All right, so we'll give that a moment. Now, while we are uh, perfect, okay, so that's finished. So let's go to the flow. Let's just refresh this. Awesome. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click edit. And if I click into when a record is updated, again, it's current, but now the current is production. So that's perfect. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to look at this step here for creating the invitation. Now, because it was created and it was, uh, sorry, it was exported and it was based on the flow that was already set up and that was to run it against the survey that was in the sandbox environment, it, that's what's listed. Now, here's the problem. And this is why I said we'll add the word sandbox to the name of the survey. Notice that now I have two that are exactly the same. That's because everything that was copied from that initial survey has, has basically been updated in production, including the name of it. So we're going to go back into Forms Pro. We are going to go back to the production environment and we're going to go into our survey and we're going to just remove 
the word sandbox and that will save automatically. So now we've got tell us how we're doing. I am going to go ahead and refresh and hopefully that will update it pretty quickly. So we're going to go back into this step and now we can see tell us how we're doing so we know that that is the correct one. So keep that in mind that's why I said if you add the word sandbox or something to the end of the survey name then at least you can go back in remove that from the survey that you copied into your production environment and then you know which one you're actually using. So now we've gone ahead and we've saved that if we go back into our um, production forms pro environment and go into that survey again go into send survey and now we can see that we've got one flow configured because we have tied the, that step of um, creating the invite for the survey to this specific survey so it automatically has said oh, okay well this is the flow that you've got configured. So a few steps but we've successfully deployed a um, survey from our sandbox environment, we've copied it into our production environment, then we've taken the flow that's related to that, exported it and then imported it into our production environment and then we've just changed the step that um, says which specific survey is this flow regarding and when we've done that we've been able to see that that flow is configured for that specific production survey. So I hope that helps. Uh, this is something that obviously Microsoft may change and may introduce a smoother approach in terms of the deployment of surveys from one environment to another. But for now, this will give you what you need to be able to do that. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.